Hey, it's your buddy Peace and Harmony with you here today. We're focusing in on the dynamics of the narcissist and the golden child, the scapegoat. Uh, this generally occurs in a family dynamic. Um, it can also occur in a workplace dynamic. In essence, where um, there is uh, a lot of favoritism going on displayed by the thoughts, behaviors, um, and sort of attitude exemplified by a narcissist or a psychopathic abuser. A narcissist, uh, generally more so though in, in the narcissist dynamics. When a narcissist, uh, someone who has an inflated sense of self, a uh, insatiable need to control others, an insatiable need to have power over others. And when we, have, when we mean control over others, we mean control over what they do, what they say, who they become, how they behave, how they feel, control over their life, really in all, all aspects of their life. And when we say narcissistic uh, manipulation or power over others, we often see, uh, when we talk about power, we're talking about um, use of negative force to uh, usually aggressively, hostily, uh, toxically use them to really cut them down, derail them, get them in a funk, uh, create a atmosphere of uh, very uncomfortability, uh, create an environment where there's not a lot of happiness, there's not a lot of joy, um, there's not a lot of uh, peace, there's not a lot of harmony. There's really, um, uh, you know, when, when we see narcissistic power grids going on in families or workplaces, there's a lot of tension, a lot of disagreement, a lot of arguing, a lot of fighting, a lot of uh, petty behaviors, people trying to uh, go off on tangents, um, either insulting others or using inappropriate affects, A-F-F-E-C-T, which means an inappropriate emotion for the situation. So for example, you know, you're sitting down to a holiday meal, which is supposed to be uh, you know, restful, fun, enjoyable, indulgent, you know, and then next thing you know, you're getting a sly comment, you know, designed to incite a fight. And, you know, the person then who is causing the comment oftentimes, you know, is not called out or it's just permitted to continue. And this really is what we see exemplified as a golden child or a, a, a person who in that dynamic of that family can do no wrong. They are the one that is selected, targeted to be the quote unquote, the best, the superior, the, uh, the, the perfect, um, child, the perfect, uh, workmate, the perfect, you know, uh, whatever the, uh, the, the situation is. And why are they selected as that? Um, it can be the baby of the family. It can be the adult of the family. Uh, it can be the, um, the new hire. It can be the old hire. Um, the golden child is someone who essentially has given in to the uh, narcissist demands and provides no resistance, is very malleable, very docile, uh, very much kind of going with whatever their needs are, does not question them, doesn't confront them, but more so doesn't call them out or doesn't really see, you know, what their injustices are. In other words, they're a little bit out of it. Um, and, and they really don't feel much of a obligation to, uh, you know, rectify situations or be a peacemaker or um, be a, uh, a do-gooder. I mean, they're just as well to be taking care of themselves. So the golden child will then feed into the narcissist in order to take care of themselves and then continue that position being jockeyed in that um, circle of influence. And so why, why does the narcissist engage in a a golden child, a, a uh, selecting a single person to pit them against another, because this gives them a very heightened sense of control. It gives them a sense of being, you know, a queen in their kingdom or a king in their kingdom. If they can manipulate the perception of another and the other perception, you know, the negative perception of another. So if they can create a positive over here and a negative over here, it creates that severing dynamic. It, it creates that ambiguity. It, it creates that tension, which the narcissist gets very excited by. They get very excited by the idea that they can, 
you know, uh, they've got this person who is just wrapped around their finger, who can do no wrong, who doesn't need to be confronted. In fact, they can give them a swift kick in the you-know-where if they want to. In other words, they can, you know, speak about them laughingly with their injustices. And even though um, it might have been, uh, like, their behavior, you know, they might have been into drugs, alcohol, you know, they couldn't keep a job, whatever it is, and, you know, now they're fine, you know, but it's, like, laughable um, what they have done. And, you know, even though it might have created a negative influence in the rest of the workplace or the rest of the family, this person, the scapegoat, is never held accountable. Uh, likewise, the uh, narcissist is never held accountable for erroneous perceptions, slandering comments, things of this nature. So you have a whole bunch of irresponsibility and, uh, you know, this sort of uh, conflict consciousness going on where, you know, they're just feeding into each other and the golden child, you know, will oftentimes say, well, I'm your favorite, aren't I? You know, and they're 50, 60 years old, you know, it's, you know, or really at any stage of their game or, you know, the co the uh, colleague at the workplace who's like, you know, I, I've been here for such and such amount of time. And even though they might be doing things wrong or, you know, um, et, et cetera, we see a lot of favoritism uh, displayed in, um, in narcissistic uh, relationships. And really, you know, any um, successful family, any successful workplace, you know, they, um, you know, with, with kids, you, you, like if you're raising kids, you know, you, you don't give one, two cookies and the other uh, one cookie. You don't give one gift, you know, of $10 here and $5 here. It creates distension. It, it creates fighting. But then, see, it keeps that, that parent who's doing the, um, the injustice of, of being, uh, you know, showing, uh, displaying unfavorability, you know, to one or another. That creates a toxic environment, and it creates a lot of that um, anxiety and tension to keep, a t um, you know, off of them, and it keeps perpetuating that narcissistic cycle. In other words, it, it creates so much distraction that the narcissist really doesn't have to be accountable for being a true parent, you know, or a real, a good parent, or being, you know, resolving things, you know, it's just, you kids are so bad, I can't do anything with you, you know, and so it becomes a, a learned helplessness sort of dynamic. Or, um, you know, for example, uh, the, the parents might be, um, you know, really projecting uh, grave hurts or injustices that were committed in their history. And so they will then project this very much so onto their family. So if they were um, raised in a specific abusive manner, then they're acting it out. So then this person who is the scapegoat, this person who is projected the negativity upon the toxicity, they are then living and carrying that shame, that legacy of shame that that person, the narcissist or psychopath or borderline is acting out. So they, in essence, get to carry the baggage, live and feel and experience all the injustices, all the pain that this narcissist or borderline went through, the psychopath went through. And so rather than them dealing with it and processing it successfully, they just go, here you go, you know, here you go, have, have some uh, inferior treatment, have some... Uh, physical abuse, have some sexual abuse, have, uh, you know, some low self-esteem, have some insecurity, here you go, have some powerlessness, you know, um, go ahead and work all the time, you know, go ahead and live like this, live unhappy, live unfulfilled, you know, and then they just kind of scoff at this person for being weak, inferior, and so they just get to kick them when they're down, so it's, it's in essence a way for them to externalize their hurt, so rather than them dealing with it and being able to treat people well, because only people who have worked through their own insecurities can treat other people well. Only people who have processed through their own personal development can then attract people who will mirror, you know, people who are evolved to that same uh, length or that uh, that same height. So that um, that that individual who can go into you know their you know later life and even elderly life, um, you know, have no longer have. Uh, never processed it and so are still engaging in all these slandering behaviors so um, it's really coming from a, a source of projection where um, that uh, that pathological person is acting out all the injustices so you then get to feel the pain um, and, and everything uh, the insecurity uh, the um, <laughs> violation uh, lack of boundaries um, that they experienced 
And then, then likewise, then they will then um, embrace the golden child as the who can do no wrong, who they feel that most exemplifies or who they identify of as their their um, idealized self. So the golden child who can do no wrong is then selected to be kind of a, a mirroring or an extension of that narcissist. So their accomplishments are then received as their own. And so they very much have a, a, a separation uh, with them, or I'm sorry, uh, a bond with them, which is very um, unhealthy as well, because then that golden child doesn't really get a sense to individuate, become their own person, and make their own mistakes, and be treated, you know, for really a, a reality-based sort of situation. They're, you know, handed um, accolades, they're handed gifts, they're handed compliments, they're handed the limelight, they're, they're handed the spotlight, and it creates that dissension which of course the narcissist gets very excited by being able to, you know, keep in this um, haughty sort of, uh, you know, almighty stance of being able to control and regulate all the emotions of everyone involved. And you see people doing this also who are extremely narcissistic. They do this with their friends. I mean, you you can't make a you know a comment um, yourself. You know, no one else can have their opinion. They have to you know control all the food, all the dynamics. You know all the all the perspective, all the entertainment. They they you know they constantly have to control everything, and so oftentimes it's it's not very enjoyable to be with these people because they're such control freaks, and they just want to manage their persona and everyone else's persona to such a degree that you can't even enjoy the experience without feeling exhausted or feeling empty or like what just happened here. You know I didn't even get to see the play. It was their, I had to see the play through their eyes, you know, and not through my eyes because they had to interpret everything or they had to, um, you know, control, you know, uh, just how everything was uh, set up. So it's, it, it's very, uh, it's definitely coming from a position of insecurity and, um, and, you know, they're, they're acting that out, they're covering that up. And then, so either positioning people up, people down. Um, and uh, it can become very insidious. So I would say, you know, definitely step, step out of that um, cycle, step out of that circle, and um, you know, really learn to um, get in touch with yourself, your own values, your own viewpoints, your own perspectives, and then you know, um, get a, get support from others who also, um, in you know, have their own viewpoints and who don't berate you and let you be yourself. Let you have your own viewpoints who aren't trying to control, manipulate, and overpower you. It's a much more enjoyable um, experience, and th these people will really provide you much better memories and future happiness and enjoyment as well. Peace and harmony with you here today. I hope these videos do help. Please share, please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support.